Hello guys, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at yet another All Pond Solutions filter. Now this one is the 600HO and this was sent to me by a lady called Luli who actually won one of my um, air pump giveaways a few weeks ago. So not only did she win one of the air pumps from Blagden, she was also going to get her filter upgraded as well. Now I think I'll get the little demonstration aquarium out, I'll hook this fella on the back, put the pipe work where it's meant to go and I'll show you what comes with it and how the water flows through it. Alright, so there's nothing complicated about this one. That's the removable lid. Now this hasn't actually been used, so these cartridges haven't been taken out of the plastic. But basically the water is sucked in through that inlet, up the pipe. And it can also be sucked in through this skimmer, which floats to the level of the water. So you're drawn from here and from here goes to here which adjusts how much is sucked and therefore how much is blown out by the pump and then the pump basically just blows it out into this chamber here and from there it goes down the side of here there is a little bit of space down the side of there so it goes down the side of here and then it goes through the foam both of these more or less at the same time then it goes through this cartridge and drops out here and here back into the tank. Now as far as cartridges go, this one's actually pretty good. It's quite thick. It's got fine pad on both sides and it's got carbon in the middle. So really you've got pretty much everything you need here. You've got coarse filtration, fine filtration and carbon. Check the price out in the links that I put in the video description. You won't believe how cheap this thing is. So in here, we've got a reasonable amount of sponge. You know, that's going to do a mechanical and a biological job. And compared to a lot of much bigger filters, that's quite a lot of sponge that you get with this filter. That is good. Then we've got two decent cartridges. Obviously, I would try and talk you out of buying replacement cartridges, and I will show you an alternative for that. But even them are pretty good. You now they're a reasonable weight, they've got a canny bit of carbon inside them. They're going to do a good job. Really, if the price of the replacements for these isn't astronomical, they're not a bad thing to buy at all. You know, I mean, the price of the filter is dirt cheap. This would make a really good filter to have in reserve. So if your main filter packed in, pack this with the media out of your main filter, set it away on the side of your tank, keep your fish alive. It is a very, very good backup filter. In its present state, with this lot in, it's a pretty good primary filter for a small tank as well. Although the cartridge system isn't ideal, as I'll explain in a minute. Now with this fella, the main problem we have with it is that the space in here is very restricted. Um, at the moment, it's mostly taken up with sponge. Which is okay, I mean you could just pack the whole lot out with sponge if you just wanted clear water. It's going to deliver that no problem, but as far as the biological side of things go, you're, you're kind of selling the filter short if you just fill it with sponge. Um, it's, it's not a very good long term solution if you want low ammonia, low nitrite and possibly low nitrate as well. It's never going to happen with sponge unless you have it as like a Hamburg matting sort of a setup where it would basically be allowed to really get clogged with filth, have a lot of slow flow zones and build up anaerobic zones after a long period of time. In here, it simply wouldn't get the chance to do that, you know, so don't waste your time filling these just with sponge. That's a waste. Now then, in order to fit these bags in, you are going to have to compromise on the sponge. And that's a bit of a bummer because I like to get a good amount of mechanical filtration and a good amount of biological filtration. But you can actually cut a lump of sponge like that just from an ordinary pond sponge. It's got a bumpy side and a flat side. See, I put little slits in it there. That allows it to slot into here. So that will just go in there. And that should give us room for approximately 700 grams of really good filter media. 
As I said before, this is the bio gravel. It's basically a porous gravel. You could put anything you want in here. So there you go, that's 700 grams of a really good porous sintered glass media. And that's gonna make a hell of a difference to the amount of ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate that actually gets processed in this filter by bacteria. If you don't wanna go with a bio gravel, you could go with something like the Eheim Substrat Pro. It's a pretty good sintered glass one. Um, who else does good sintered glass ones? I think JBL do a decent one, Micromech. Micromec or Micromec Pro. Don't waste your money on cheap ceramic rings. They'll hold next to nought. You're better off just packing it with foams if you're gonna put crappy rings in. Go for something that's good quality and very porous. Um, even a, a crushed lava rock. If you can get reasonable lava rock, put it in mesh bags, pack it in here. Um, pumice, white pumice, you can get some good grades of that. Anything other than just foam. Talking of just foam, we haven't actually got much in the way of mechanical filtration. So in the centre bit, if you wanted to, you could just drop a bit of fine pad in there. That will catch a lot of the muck that swirls round. You'll need to take that out and change it every so often. Obviously, depending on the situation in the tank, that could be everything from once every three or four days to once every three or four weeks. I'll bring the camera in, let you look from the top, and I'll explain what's happening. Let's whip that out. Right. So the water's getting drawn in, and it's getting spat out into this chamber. Now this foam doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of this chamber. Let's see if we can get the light on. Oh, where are we? There we are. You cannot really see, but there's a gap of approximately half an inch between the bottom of the foam and the bottom of this particular chamber. So the water can go through there and it'll ultimately end up behind here. And there's a, a lot of contact surface area there. You're gonna trap a lot of muck in there. Then it's gonna go through there and through there into here where you've got your biological media and then it's gonna drop out. As I said before, if you wanna catch a little bit more muck, just cram that in there. The water flowing around here will gradually settle out muck in here and you can just change that it's a pretty convenient place to have it as well you know just shove it in wait till it gets clogged up whip it out put a new one in and repeat that process this is just a fluffed up version of the white pad that i sell cost next to nothing you know i mean you could get dozens and dozens out of one of the 17 by 11 inch pads and that's going to last you a long time so basically you're going to have clear water and healthy water. Mechanical filtration for your clear water, biological filtration for your healthy water. Hopefully you can see here that's the gap between the sponge so the water is going to go through these are all the knobbly bits and it's going to come up all around the back of this sponge so you've got a massive contact surface area. Uh, that little gap there is important to let the water through. Now this will hopefully stop people shouting at their device now, but on the inlet, just slot a piece of foam. When it gets clogged, whip it off, squeeze it, put it back on. Buy a few of these, have some as spares, they make a hell of a difference. So they're going to save you getting as much muck in your filter. That is the first thing that I should have showed you. I know I've mentioned it in previous Hang On The Back videos before, I just forgot in this one. Sorry about that. This one isn't a perfect fit. You can secure it with an elastic band or something, but you can get different size ones, you know. These ones are, I think they're available in like a pack of 12 or 20 or 10s or something. But uh, I'll put a link to it in the video description, along with a link to this and anything else that you might find useful. That's important. Here we go, suitable for aquariums up to 120 litres. As we know, you can normally halve what the manufacturer says. But we've got 700 grams of media in there. If your tank wasn't overly stocked, you could get good water quality in 120 litres. Um, it's generally overstating it though. I mean, one of these fellas on a 50 to 75 litre tank would do an outstanding job. And it's easy to maintain as well. 
Right, that was just a very short, simple setup. You know, these things are a simple filter. I still can't get over how cheap they are. And as I say, it would make a really good backup filter. If you've got a canister filter on your tank, and for whatever reason it broke down, they normally break down over Christmas when all the shops are shut and there's no deliveries. So if it breaks down, you've got that media that needs to be kept alive. Just cram this thing full of the media, plug it in, and your media stays alive, your fish stay alive. Alternately, if you've got a small tank, one of these fellas is a good buy. Certainly better than a lot of those little crappy internal filters, you know, because they just rely generally on a block of sponge that would be half that size, you know. You get a lot for very little money with these, and you can do so much with them. So don't rule out hang on the back filters. I know they're not very popular in the UK, but they are gathering popularity. In the US, it's a different story, obviously. Everybody is familiar with hang on the back filters. In the UK, it is gathering traction, but it is taking a while. Hopefully seeing something set up like this to be efficient and effective will change your mind if you're on the fence about buying one. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it anywhere. Check out my previous videos because I think there's 40 odd now in this series. So if you're thinking of buying any sort of filter, Check the videos out, see how the water flows through it, even if you don't want to set it up the way I have set them up, at least you know how the water flows through it. That is important. So if you can even just take that away from any of the videos, that'll make me happy. Thanks for watching. I shall catch you in the next video.